All right, guys, before we get into the video, uh, if you guys want to help promote the channel, if you just like the video, subscribe to the channel uh, and watch the video. Ooh, this froze. Uh, ooh, there we go. Well, anyway, if you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel and just watch the video start to finish all the way through. That just helps promote the channel. Uh, it makes me want to upload more videos for you guys, make them more entertaining. I'm still new to this, getting used to talking in front of a camera. But we're sitting in the first barn, so right off the bat, we're going to do the equipment tour. And I had a lot of you guys wanting an equipment tour of what we use on a fruit farm. We don't have a whole bunch of equipment. Uh, we have a few barns we're going to go through. This barn's got a lot of boxes in the back, too. Um, we don't worry about those. We, we just use the equipment we need, um, as well as we have neighbors that have certain pieces that we'll borrow. And we have certain pieces of equipment that our neighbors will borrow. Right off the bat, I want to say, though, there are some pieces of equipment that we do not have on the farm right now. Um, that, and as we're going through, I'll talk about those. There's just certain things that there's certain things at this time of year. Um, one, we're renovating a new barn for a shop right now. So we don't have the ability to work on a lot of stuff uh, ourselves right now. Plus, there's also things where we just don't know how to do it ourselves. So we send it off to other shops this time of year, and that helps. That just makes sure this time of year, we're not using this stuff. It gets gone through. Everything is ready for the spring so that hopefully we prevent any breakdowns we're going to have. So off-site right now is our two semis. We have an International 4300 Durastar and another International Flatbed Semi. Both are flatbeds. Um, that's just what really in apples we use. We don't have any tractor-trailer combos, as of yet at least. Um, both of those are either 26 or 28 foot beds. Also off site is two 5525s, one being a cab with front wheel assist with like 2,800 hours as a spray tractor and a uh, cabless, kind of like this tractor, uh, 5525 narrow series with like 8,000 hours on its third tack. Uh, that one does a lot of brush chopping and it's one of our main weed spray tractors as well. Also sitting off site right now is we have our apple planter, which you guys will see very shortly, a full video on Excuse me, me and my buddy are done building it. Also, we have a Phil Brown root pruner, Phil Brown uh, uh, post pounder, a Phil Brown a brush sweep. And then we also have a, we also have another weed spray tank that's sitting off site right now as well. And there's probably a few other things I'm forgetting, but it doesn't matter. But let's get into the equipment tour. So right off the bat, we're going to start with our 5093EN. This is a two-wheel drive tractor, narrow series. I want to say it has either just under, or just over 2,000 hours, somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, this tractor, we had the spacing come out just a little bit in the front wheelbase because we use this tractor a lot for prepping orchard ground. So it pulls a chisel, disc, field finisher, all that. Again, for what we're doing, it, that those are all small implements. This is a 100 horse tractor, it handles it perfect. This one also does a lot of mowing. It's been an apple planting tractor in the past. It's used during harvest time. Uh, this is kind of a jack of all trades tractor. It's awesome to have around the farm. Over here we have, I guess this is part of the equipment tour. It's our Z530R zero turn. This mows about five acres every time we mow. It mows around the barns and my parents' house and my grandma and grandpa's. Over here, we got an old X320. This is what I take to my house in the summer. and the winter, I bring it back here just to store. This thing has a couple thousand hours on it. Uh, that one doesn't have too many. We have a Case 80N. This is one of our lower horsepower tractors, front wheel assist. This only has about 600 hours on it, maybe not even that. I don't know how much longer it's going to be around here. Um, you guys saw a lot of the shorts and other videos. We have had a lot of problems with it. Uh, not saying it's not a good tractor, just for us doesn't fit in. Plus, this is our only red piece of equipment. We are John Deere through everything else. It was a really nice mowing tractor, though. It was quiet. I mean, it worked perfect. I, I liked it. The only problem I would say is a little tight up in here. Uh, but pulling a disc with the front wheel assist, it worked really well. Just maybe not a tractor for us. This is my personal favorite tractor that I spend a lot of time in is our John Deere 5101. This tractor is has front wheel assist as well. It's 110 horsepower to the engine. 
This thing sprays apples, sprays grapes. Uh, it really is more of a spray tractor. This one is always hooked up to a sprayer. It's extremely comfy to sit in. It's mowed grapes before and done some stuff like that. But really this thing is a spray tractor, true and true. Um, in during spray season, you'll see we usually have a monitor in here that we're spraying with. Uh, it's a T-Jet system, works out real well. We also have the three uh, Chevy 1500 pickups that we have around here, as well as um, one other tractor that is not on site right now, is actually at our local Greenmark dealer, is a 5075 GL. Again, a smaller horsepower tractor. Uh, basically does every, all the jobs that this one does, mows, it will become another weed spray tractor. Uh, it's gonna be used during apple harvest. Uh, most likely, this tractor will disappear for a little bit until we find a replacement, but that 5075 GL will be able to do any job this did, just one less operator. Out here real quick, we have our Phil Brown weed spray boom. Uh, this is our single, we have a double two. That's offsite right now being made. Uh, we have two piece trailers here, two over there, two more behind. And then a lot of this stuff's just kind of some junk right now. Back here we have two five foot uh, rotary choppers that we use in grapes. We also over here have an MX-6 rotary chopper that we use in grapes. Um, they all work good, the six foot's probably my favorite, but in some of our tighter spacings, those five foots work awesome. We have an MX-8 that is being built right now that'll be here soon for all of our high density orchards. This is our 10 foot uh, John Deere 1008. This can't fit in those 12 foot or lower spacings or it's the 1018 my bad we have this 10 foot offset bush hog it's very heavy duty we use this thing mostly for chopping brush those housings are really tall so we try and keep it out of the orchard as much as possible here's that mx6 six foot rotary chopper this does chops brush and grapes which is very little um, and mows grass throughout the summer and then we have a 1008, 10 foot offset John Deere. This is what we use for mowing grass a lot. The housings are smaller. Uh, it works perfect. The only thing we're missing is we, well, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have seven choppers right now. We're looking at getting one more uh, straight pole, uh, 10 foot chopper for apples because we still have a lot of larger spacings. Um, in the future, we'd like to get another MX-8 as we get more high density. But the one thing we're really missing right now is a flail chopper. Uh, we've never really had one, so we do have that brush pusher over there. You'll see more of that in the spring. If we can't chop it with this, we push it and burn it. This is just a little trailer we made. Uh, it's good for grape harvest or putting it, little stuff like that. We have four sets of these forks we had built a long time ago. These are what we use for harvest. We don't have box wagons or anything. We put bins in at a time, three at a time, take them out one at a time. But these things work awesome. We use these basically on all the open face tractors. All right, so we're in our small market cooler. So we keep, uh, keep any packed goods or stuff for markets. Just a small, small space, but works perfect also for the stand that sits in front of the main barn. Um, but this isn't one of our main cold storage rooms. This little gator grandpa really likes to drive this around the guys basically if we're doing any work in grapes high density apples you know they can put everything they need in here and off they go or if you know we're just trying to get around look at stuff in between harvest and like that perfect load run around vehicle here is one of the other 55 25 ends this is this one's front wheel assist this one has i think just over 4,000 hours this one is our main grape weed spray tractor. It's all hooked up for it right now in here. Um, also right now it has a snow plow on it. It's our highest hour cab. So we don't mind using it in the winter to go and push snow and get it all messy and get salt on it and all that. This thing also runs the grape sprayer most of the time as well as the grape chopper. Back here, we got dad's favorite little vehicle, the Kawasaki Mule. He takes this thing everywhere. It's also good for helping set up orchards and in the grapes. It's narrow enough, but most of it's him just driving around the farm. We have our M-Series John Deere, fully restored. This does nothing besides go to fairs and parades and sits out front of our storefront. Sometimes, 
if too many people are touching it, dad puts it back away. Uh, it needs a nice cleaning though. Up here, we got an old fertilizer spreader. We don't really use it for fertilizer. We'll rent one from one of the co-ops like Nutrient or Will Browless. But we do use this from time to time in the fall to put on mouse bait because we can get down to about 10 pounds per acre. We have this water trailer. Uh, we bought this just last year. Really, before we get trickle irrigation set up, we just kind of flood the trees in the trench that we make when we're planting, and that keeps them alive. And sometimes we're so busy during the year, we don't get trickling at all, and this just waters the trees to keep them alive. We're not necessarily getting the growth, but keeping them alive. Just a little runaround vehicle, Honda 250. It... I don't even know if we really use, you'd say we use it for work that much, but it is handy for checking bins between pickers if we're in multiple orchards. We have our one Toyota forklift. We also have a Caterpillar forklift that's off-site right now. This one, I think, has about 6,000 hours on it. They load all the train, B-train semis you see me post on during apple season, peach season, moving stuff in and out of coolers. We'll transport it to off-site cooler sites. Uh, this thing is one of the most essential parts of our whole operation. Um, I would love to have another one. No, not even a question. Then we got this John Deere 5303. It's got a bucket and forks and also we have the brush pusher for it. This is kind of used as a backup for loading apples or for another pad, unloading empty bins to get things, to get orchards set up. It pushes a lot of brush. It burns all the piles. It's, uh, it gets beat up. We don't know how many hours are on this tractor. Uh, the tack broke, so we're not really sure, but it's an awesome tractor to have around. Nice chore tractor. If it, if it broke, ah, we, we for sure, I don't know if we would get another one or go for a skid steer, but, and also don't mind the barn being such a mess right now. With us renovating that other barn for a shop, we kind of had to fit everything in here. This is more so our packing shed, a lot of peach boxes, apples. Uh, you know, like I told you, this is our little cooler for packed goods. Usually we'll have a little line back here and we'll be packing. Um, but to get everything, to get that barn ready and another barn ready, we had to fit a lot of stuff in here we don't normally like to. Now, I get a lot of questions on this. We have an Alice Chalmers version of this too. But the one you guys see me run the most is this farm I'll be in. This is a turnaround forklift. This used to be the front. Now this is the front. We have a custom mast that was placed on it. This is back from 1948. This is my grandpa did this. They're not the fastest. They're not the most efficient way to load apples, but in Michigan, these are huge. A lot of people have these. They're very cheap. You can find all the parts at AutoZone. We have the tricycle wheels on the back to make it very tight turning when we're, when we're on small pads. It can still lift about two bins at a time. We can bring it down here to load on the main pad if we need to for the train semis. But this is really an off-road forklift for out in the field for bad terrain, muddy, where one of these hard forklifts can't get on. I mean, these need nice either gravel base or concrete blacktop. This thing excels. So we'll head to the next barn. Um, trying to think if there's anything else off-site that I didn't go over. Oh. We do our market truck. When you guys see us go to farmer's markets, we have a box truck, a uh, Chevy 3500 Express, and a E450 uh, Ford box truck. Both of those are off-site right now, stored in uh, warm areas. So those both are ready for market season. So here, if I can zoom in, you've seen me run one of these uh, when I'm trimming. This is one of our pruning towers. We have three of these. I will be doing uh, more in-depth videos. I've had a lot of questions on uh, how those things work, where they're from, and all that. And that's one of our old air blast sprayers that we don't use anymore. All right, we are at barn number four. Oh, it's froze too. So, in this barn, this is one of our chemical barns. Uh, here is one of our weed spray. This is one of our weed spray tanks of the Phil Brown weed spray boom. We'll be set up to and usually on the front of the tractor. Also, we have in here three DNW PTO sprayers. Oh, I lied. This is the engine driven. So we have this is one of the PTO sprayers. This is the one you see me spray a lot with. This is what's hooked on to the 5101 most of the time. This sprayer basically stays in apples, but it is set up for grapes. So it's in grapes a little bit. 
because of how much acreage we can cover with grapes at a time, this is basically our main sprayer for grapes. This one basically stays constantly in grapes. Uh, it's really the only sprayer we use for grapes. Even though any of these can go into any of our crops, apples, grapes, or peaches. This one mainly stays on apples. This one mainly stays on grapes. This one too mainly stays on apples. This is our engine driven sprayer. I'd like to get rid of this one shortly and go to all PTOs, just a lot less to go wrong. This is a, you know, a separate engine and everything. So we do have more issues with this one. Uh, this one was broke down a few times this season as these two never skipped a beat. And here too, we have our John Deere 5520 tractor. It's an old tractor. It has sprayed its entire life. It is always hooked up to this engine driven sprayer. It has just about 5,000 hours. The controls are always in here for this sprayer. This is literally all it does. It will pull a trailer from time to time but this combo basically is only for spraying. So the other two barns don't really have anything um, equipment-wise stored in them. It's picking buckets, ladders, bolt boxes, uh, some trailers, nothing, nothing really too exciting. The last few things are just some tillage implements. We'll check those out in the morning, it's starting to get dark. Uh, I think it's about six o'clock now. We're finally starting to stay a little bit lighter later. But I got to get home, get to the gym. So we're going to pick this up in the morning. All right, well, it's about 8 in the morning, 17 degrees next day. But we're going to get this knocked out real quick for the equipment tour. We're going to do something on all the different crop systems we have. Um, we have some other tillage tools up front that we use. Uh, some drag. Oh, man. Some drags. Finishers, but this is what we mainly use. So it's all got some snow on it. But this is our seven shank chisel plow. Uh, it, it actually goes around pretty deep and small, but remember it's ran on orchard size tractors. So even though they're 100 horsepower, they just don't have any any weight to them. This is our little junkyard. Even though we're gonna get this trailer out, and get this remade. Uh, just, that's another drag in the back. We very rarely use that. This is a 15 foot case disc. Uh, after we chisel, we'll run this, or we may even run this before to break up some ground. Then run the chisel, then come back and run this again. So we have another piece in the back. This is our Vibra shank. This is 15 foot as well, maybe 16. It it works good. It just doesn't go quite as deep and break the ground up as much as the chisel. Then we have, this is our John Deere 10 foot uh, fuel finisher color packer. It's got those big rollers, it's full of snow. We'll do another one in the spring. But this just kind of makes a nice seed bed, packs it down. Also we use it in plantings to pack the middles back down. It's just a little toolbar we have. We can move these wherever we want them. Usually we take this middle one out and this is what we use in new grape plantings and new nursery apple plantings because this would these small shanks would go right around and just work the ground right around and keep all weeds out and this is our small little field finisher we can take the basket in the back off her once in a while and i like these new high density settings this 10 foot can't fit so this makes a real nice flat most would say see but for us just a nice alleyway in the middle of these apples we'll run it down twice Works all the ruts out, keeps the middles clean, and so we, we plant grass in it. That's basically our little lineup of tillage tools. Besides bins, ladders, and probably a few more little pieces of equipment and maybe one or two big pieces that I may be missing, uh, that's basically the equipment lineup that we have for apples, grapes, and peaches. Uh, we don't do any grain anymore, so uh, all of our all of that equipment we used to have, like planters. We never had a combine, but planters and a couple bigger tractors, uh, we got all that, all that's gone. Well, I hope you guys like seeing some of the equipment that we use around on our farm. Uh, it's a lot different than you see on other farms. You know, there's not as many specialty crop farms out there like apples, peaches, and grapes. Again, guys, if you can watch the video from start to finish, that helps the channel. <clears throat> Anytime you guys like the video, share the video, you know, comment on the video what you liked or what I need to improve on or 
or more videos you want to see in the future i appreciate all that it just helps this channel grow it helps me uh have the want to put that more time into it to give you guys better content so hope you guys have a good day and we'll see you in the next one